Hello everyone. So I try to do something new. I hope this way of learning anatomy might be fun. So the way this is going to work is that I've displayed a picture of the abdominal aorta and its branches. So you have to pause this video and try to label as many parts as you can. And once you've completed, you can resume watching the video to check your answers. After displaying the answers, I will also describe important pathologies associated with this region of the body. Go ahead and try to label these parts. If you weren't able to get all of them, it's absolutely fine. By the end of this video, you'll know each one of them. Three arteries which supply the GI tract are the celiac trunk, superior mesenteric artery and the inferior mesenteric artery. These are not paired. This is the diaphragm, so the artery right below it will be the inferior phrenic artery. The adrenals are located above the kidney. This is why the arteries they receive blood from are called the suprarenal arteries. This is the renal artery and this is the gonadal artery. Most of the time, arteries and veins follow a similar branching pattern, but in case of gonadal blood vessels, it is a little different. The gonadal arteries are branches of the abdominal aorta. The right gonadal vein empties into the inferior vena cava, but the left gonadal vein drains into the left renal vein. The one in the center right here is known as the median sacral artery. The bifurcation of the abdominal aorta takes place at L4. It splits into the right and left common iliac arteries. These further divide into internal and external iliac arteries on either sides. These tiny ones are the lumbar arteries. The diameter of the abdominal aorta is usually around 2 cm. If any part of the abdominal aorta has a diameter of greater than 3 cm, it is known as abdominal aortic aneurysm. This is most often located below the origin of the renal artery. Atherosclerosis and smoking are strong risk factors for this. The chances of rupture is high if the diameter is greater than 5 cm. The renal vein runs between the superior mesenteric artery and the aorta. So, there's a high chance of it getting compressed between these two structures. Compression of the renal vein will lead to backing up of blood in the kidney, leading to congestion. This would result in flank pain and hematuria. Recall that on the left side, the gonadal vein empties into the renal vein. So, this would lead to pelvic congestion as well. Similar to the renal vein, the third part of the duodenum runs in between the superior mesenteric artery and the abdominal aorta. So this part of the duodenum can also get compressed between these two structures. Individuals with superior mesenteric artery syndrome will present with postprandial pain and intermittent symptoms of obstruction. People with low abdominal fat are at high risk for this condition. When there is fat present between the two structures, it prevents it from compressing the duodenum. But when there is less fat, the aotomesenteric angle gets reduced and this results in duodenal compression. We have now come to the end of this video. I hope this way of learning could make anatomy a little more fun than it usually is. Please let me know what you think of this idea and I will use that as an indication to make more videos like this. Thank you.